Hello and welcome to a new Dark Souls lore episode. My name is Alex, or Silvermont. In this episode we're going to be talking about a character who has a presence in both Dark Souls and the sequel, Dark Souls 2. A character that many of you have asked me to cover. In fact, I don't think there's been a single more requested character than he. Could only be... Havel. The Rock. I mentioned that he's present in both games, but that isn't strictly speaking true. Havel himself is a relatively important side character in the first game, but whether or not we actually encounter him is up for debate. And likewise, despite his armor set being one of the most popular in the sequel, the bishop himself makes no appearance. Once again, however, we do fight an enemy wearing his armor, Ancient Soldier Varg. And we'll get to him, and indeed we'll talk more about him in a future video concerning Shulva, the Sanctum City. But let's start with Havel himself. First up, I am going to say Havel, not Havel. I don't know which is technically the correct pronunciation, but I'm just going to stick with Havel. And when I say Havel, I don't mean the Czech playwright either. Indeed, I don't think there's too much significance behind the name itself, but I'm sure many of you have heard the theory concerning Havel the Rebel and whatnot, which means I don't need to go too in-depth about that. So instead, let's have a look at Havel himself and review what we know about him. Gwyn was not alone in his fight against the dragons. We know of his brave Silver Knights and of Ornstein and Artorius, but so too was he joined on the battlefield by Havel the Rock, a bishop. The Way of White probably didn't exist until after the dragons were destroyed, which makes me think that Havel probably wasn't a bishop whilst fighting the dragons. Originally, he was just Havel the Rock. So why the Rock? Did he have an illustrious career in wrestling and acting? Probably not. That name comes from his armour. Armour worn by Havel the Rock's warriors, carved from solid rock. Its tremendous weight is matched only by the defence it provides. Havel's warriors never flinched nor retreated from battle. Those unfortunate enough to face them were inevitably beaten to a pulp. Worn by Havel the Rock's warriors, and doubtless Havel himself, but that is useful in that it tells us that Havel isn't the only one to wear that armour. It is not unique to him. Not that it really matters from a gameplay perspective, as there are other circumstances of unique armour being duplicated in the world, mostly in the case of Oscar's armour, the Elite Knight set. Either way, it's important information. So, Havel led a group of warriors and fought with Gwyn against the dragons, and Havel wielded a dragon's weapon in his fight against them, the Dragon Tooth, and that isn't just a flashy name, Havel is actually wielding an everlasting dragon's tooth. Specifically, the club is crafted from a tooth. Harder than stone, it never breaks, and even gives the wielder a resistance to magic and fire. Presumably because the dragons themselves have a resistance to such things. Or was it imbued for Havel? After all, it would make sense to give your weapon protection from flames if you're fighting dragons. But why? Why magic? Surely you don't need protection from magic if you're fighting dragons, do you? Unless you're fighting one dragon, one whom betrayed his own, and is known as the grandfather of sorcery, Seath. And as it happens, Havel was not a fan of Seath. Can you blame him? How can anyone rightly trust a traitor? Stabbing one back is much the same as any other, and it wouldn't surprise me if others went in shock of how Gwyn favoured Seath. Did the Sunlight King really take no precautions and trust Seath as much as all that? Of course, Dragon Slayer Ornstein, or something bearing his name, did remain in Anor Londo, in close proximity to the White Dragon. Havel the Rock, an old battlefield compatriot of Lord Gwyn, was the sworn enemy of Seath the Scaleless. He despised magic and made certain to devise means of counteraction. Did Havel despise Seath because he used magic, or did he despise magic because Seath used it? I would imagine the latter. If you had fought besides your king and friend against an enemy only to have one join your cause, it's only natural to have misgivings over such a sour issue, and only natural to take your own precautions. 
In Havel's case, they seem to have involved preparing for an attack against Seath, or for an eventual attack by Seath. Did his warriors share this belief? If so, that might explain why we don't find more Havel enemies during the game. They are either dead, exiled, or perhaps even turned into Silver Knights. And if not, that, that could make sense too. If Havel's Rock is imprisoned, his warriors would surely be split up and disbanded, again, potentially becoming Silver Knights. Havel's gear, and um, whether or not it's his gear, is hard to know, is found alongside his Dragon Tooth and Great Shield, in a hidden room deep in Anolondo's Great Cathedral, along with a mimic and an occult club. And that last is what has fueled speculation by some. What is occult used for? From a gameplay perspective, it increases your damage against Silver Knights, Ornstein, Gwyndolin, and Gwyn. In other words, it is a damage type that is most effective against the gods, or lords, or giants, whatever you want to call the race that Gwyn and Ornstein belong to. Why, just take a look at the description of the Dark Ember. Cult weapons were used to hunt the gods, and are effective against their following and kin. I've mentioned it in my video on the old Dragon Slayer, but occult damage and dark damage are very much the same, in my opinion. So, Havel potentially having a god-killing club alongside his famous dragon tooth certainly seems a little suspicious. Was he planning to kill the gods? A god? Gwyndolin? Maybe. Almost ironic. A bishop plotting to kill a god? And what became of Havel? Ostensibly, we find him early on in Dark Souls in the Undead Burg. Whether or not this is actually THE Havel, we can't be certain. He has no boss name, after all, he's just an elite enemy, so to speak. But he is holding Havel's, presumably unique, Dragon Tooth weapon, and the Watchtower basement key seems to imply it is Havel. The basement of the Watchtower forms a stone cell. There are rumours of a hero turned hollow who was locked away by a dear friend. For his own good, of course. There are rumours of a hero turned hollow. That to me implies Havel himself, the word hero. If it were one of his warriors, I do not think the wording would be the same. And then there's the next part. Hero turned hollow who was locked away by a dear friend. There's no comma there. Did he turn hollow before or after he was locked away? And finally, locked away by a dear friend, for his own good, of course. What does that tone suggest to you? There is a comma there however, which stresses the, of course. Here's my opinion on the matter. Gwyn, the dear friend, locked Havel away due to Havel's mistrust and hatred of Seath. Perhaps his potential rebellion was discovered, or perhaps it was all planned. Perhaps somebody planted that occult club, and it was used as the perfect evidence to throw away the disgraced bishop in a cell. Either way, Havel was locked away by Gwyn. Why lock him away? Why not kill him? Well, Havel seems to potentially be a human as he can hollow. Whether or not the lords can hollow is a matter of debate, but I do not believe that is the case, and it would imply to me that Havel was human, a, a pygmy, as he did hollow, and it makes sense that some humans would follow Gwyn, as we know the Way of White is presumably mostly a following made up of humans. Presumably, of course. Whether or not he hollowed before or after doesn't seem all that important in the end, but what do you think? If Havel's rebellion was indeed discovered, perhaps that wasn't enough reason to lock him away. Maybe the occult club was used to have further evidence against him that he was planning a rebellion not only against Seath, but Gwyn himself. Who knows? So, a quick summary. Havel fought with Gwyn and was later made a bishop. At some point, he developed a hatred for Seath. This much we can say for certain. Following this, it is likely that he was locked away by Gwyn, probably due to his hatred of Seath, and there's also the possibility of rebellion. And then he hollows and we find him, and so forth. Then again, the key says rumours of a hero turned hollow, and that could easily invalidate everything we've just been speaking of, that one word, rumours. Time to move on in that case. Something curious to note, supposedly, in the Spanish language version of Dark Souls, Havel's armour has the same description as the brass set. 
armor of the Dark Moon Nightus, firekeeper of Anor Londo. After becoming undead, she visited the Dark Sun Gwyndolin at the Mausoleum of the Spiral Depths, became a Blade of Dark Moon, and assumed the flame-keeping duty. She received this armor, which hides her hideous form and helps her hunt the guilty. If you have the Spanish language version of the game, maybe you can check that out and see if it's been patched or if it's still the same thing. Now, I would assume it was just an error, but if it hasn't been patched, why not, if that is really the case? I mean, it's probably not important, but I thought I should bring it up in case anyone wants to go theory crafting speculation mad. Additionally, in the Japanese version of the game, apparently the watchtower basement key has the last line removed. For his own good, of course. If that is the case, it really makes you wonder why they would add that in. Is it to emphasize a point? It would be a lot of fun to play through the game in Japanese and compare all the item descriptions. I don't think I'll be able to manage that, however. I have enough trouble just with English. But what about Dark Souls 2? If you've played it, then doubtless you've encountered dozens of Havel friends online. How can they resist? His armor provides tremendous defense against every threat there is. Not to mention, it also gives you incredible poise. Sadly, many of those wearing it dishonor Havel's memory by flinging spells in every conceivable direction. Havel would be ashamed. But why does his armor return? In my opinion, because it was popular and people liked it. The description makes note of just how many years have passed. The origin of the name Havel is not clear. Some say it was the warrior who wore the armor, but others say it was the name of a great kingdom ruined in a barbaric war. So, rumors of Havel remain, even after all that time. Indeed, in Mirror, people still remember tales of the rock. This miracle is said to shield its caster with the rock's armor, and was common amongst the wizard knights of Mirror. But do they know that Havel and the rock are one and the same? And interesting that it is used in Mira. Havel was a bishop, and in the old capital of Mira there exists an ancient spring, a spring that produces holy water. It almost makes one wonder if that capital might not exist near Anorlondo, perhaps? Who knows? And tell me, what do you think about Havel? I know you have a lot of theories, and I hope you'll share them in the comments below. Either way, Thank you so much for watching, and now I can finally say that yes, I do have a video on Havel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.